Hey, how's it going guys? It's Nate here. And Fallout 4 is a game that confronts players with a number of choices. Which faction do you join in the main quest line? Who do you side with on the island of Far Harbor? Is Lorenzo or Jack Cabot the man telling the truth? Should you? Well, you get the idea. Most of the decisions we're forced to make in Fallout 4 have some level of moral ambiguity, with no clearly defined good or inherently evil option. However, a handful of the choices to be made in the Commonwealth are just that clear-cut, with blatantly bad and heroic options. And every now and then, it's just fun, or even downright hilarious, to take a break from being the good guy, and instead indulge our inner evildoer. So today we'll be taking a look at five of the most evil decisions you can make in Fallout 4. Starting off, upon the player's first visit to Vault 81, one of the last remaining populated vaults in all of America, as its great steel door opens, a small house cat named Ashes will dart outside of the compound, leaving the security of life underground and running into the dangers of the Commonwealth. This whole event doesn't seem especially significant at first, but as you meet the inhabitants of Vault 81, you'll eventually be introduced to a young girl named Erin, who reveals that Ashes was indeed her pet kitty, and she'll beg you to go out and bring him back home. This begins the appropriately named mission, Here Kitty Kitty, and it's incredibly simple and fast. All you do is exit the vault, follow a marker directing you a few meters south, find Ashes just chillin' there, and tell him to go home. After which, the undersized Khajiit will do just that and sprint back to Vault 81. Now, this is arguably one of Fallout 4's least realistic quests, as we all know that's not how cats work, but I digress. Once Ashes is back home, just approach Erin and she'll thank you, completing the quest. But here's the funny thing. Shortly after Ashes makes his initial escape, and Erin begs for your help, if you have high enough charisma, you can shake up the poor kid, demanding that she pay you increased sums of money if she ever wants to see Ashes again. Mind you, this girl is like 12. Take a listen. Excuse me, mister. Have you seen my cat? How much would you pay to get him back? You can have my teddy bear. I've kind of outgrown him anyway. That's all? I can give you my kickball. I really like it. But I like Ashes better. Look, kid, pay me what it's worth, or I'm not helping. You can have my silver locket. My mom gave it to me. I like it better than anything in the world. Except Ashes, of course. Next on our list, the quest, Diamond City Blues, centers around a conflict between Paul Pembroke and the owner of the Colonial Tap House, Henry Cook. You see, Paul's wife, Darcy, recently began an affair with Henry, and when Paul tried to fight Henry over this matter, Paul did not win. He just wants the affair between Darcy and Cook to end, but clearly neither interested party will listen to him. He'll ask that you accompany him as he prepares to confront Henry one final time, his thinking being that with you by his side, perhaps he'll appear more intimidating, and Henry might listen. Alas, the two of you's engagement with the Tap House's owner will quickly get more heated than expected, when Paul, out of frustration, pulls out a pipe weapon on Henry. It's pretty easy to defuse the situation. You just need to pass any one of a number of yellow, or easy speech checks. Once you do, Henry will surprisingly apologize and admit he was wrong, agreeing to never speak to Darcy again but he'll also suggest a way he can make it up to both of you. Henry claims to have knowledge of a major chem deal going on just outside of Diamond City. He invites you and Paul to ambush it alongside him and proceed to split the loot. If you agree, the trio of you will battle some triggermen just outside the ballpark, steal some chems, and the quest will finally end. Henry then reveals his plans to skip town, and he'll walk off into the sunset never to be seen again. Paul, on the other hand, will go back to his normal life, Though, depending on how many chems you give to him and what share of the loot he gets to take, he might even start up a business. Regardless, that'll be that. At least, that's how this quest normally goes. The thing is, throughout this entire mission, Henry Cook, that cheating bartender, is never set as essential, meaning he can die at any given time. On your way to ambush the chem shipment, during the battle you have there? In fact, if you don't talk Paul out of shooting him at the tap house, he'll be killed there. Though you can still intercept the chem shipment and continue the quest after you find out about it thanks to some documents Henry left on his body. How nice of him. But if at any point Henry Cook did die, a new world interaction will be unlocked. 
wherein upon a future visit to Diamond City, you can actually be approached by a woman claiming to be his daughter, demanding to know how her father died. You can tell her that you had something to do with it, turning her hostile, convince her that her dad had it coming, which will cause her to just leave pretty sadly, or lie and blame his death entirely on Paul, acting like you had nothing to do with it. If you chose that final option, she'll walk away in frustration. I should just kill you both! One of you killed my father! Nothing immediately will happen or change, but a few in-game days later, Paul will in fact be removed from the game, and you'll be able to overhear Diamond City residents talk about how some woman just walked up to Paul Pembroke and gunned him down in cold blood. Your lies will have gotten a potentially innocent man killed! You hear about Paul Pembroke? Apparently some woman just showed up and shot him dead. Crazy world, huh? Likewise, if Henry didn't die and walked away at the end of Diamond City Blues with his life, you may still be accosted by his daughter. But she'll just want to know where he is, and won't turn hostile unless seriously provoked. Nonetheless, if betrayal is up your alley, Paul Pembroke has a pretty tragic fate ahead of him. Coming at number 3, south of University Point, the player may overhear a young boy call out to you from inside a fridge. He'll claim that his name is Billy, and that 200 years ago when the bombs began to fall, he was staying at a friend's house, and decided to take refuge in that guy's fridge. Unfortunately, while he survived the blast, he couldn't exactly get out, and has been locked inside this fridge for the last two centuries. You'll be asked to open it up so he can finally see the light of day. As Billy gloriously emerges from his metal confines, he'll be revealed as a ghoul. This explains how he survived for so long with no food. The fridge must have shielded him from just enough radiation to avoid death, but not ghoulification. Billy will then beg that you lead him back to his old home, so he might see what's become of where he once lived, and he's pretty hopeful that his parents are still alive, though that seems a tad unlikely. Regardless, as you lead him to Quincy, where he claims to have once lived, the two of you will be approached by a man named Bullet. Bullet cuts straight to the chase. He'll walk up to you and blatantly offer to buy Billy from you for 200 caps. He says ghouls make great workers, as they have long lifespans and don't need to be fed. Of course, the proper response is to say, no, I'm not about to sell you a child. Well, okay, technically Billy's over 200 years old, but you get the idea. After rejecting the man and finally ending up at Billy's old house, to everyone's surprise, his parents will actually still be there. Evidently, they also survived the bombs as ghouls, and have been missing their boy for centuries. You'll get to witness this beautiful family reunion. Though the moment can't last, Bullet will return with some friends and they'll surround the house, declaring their intention to take Billy by force. A brief firefight will typically ensue unless you're able to pass a speech check. Now you must protect the newly reunited family. And once the attackers are repulsed, Billy's parents will reward you with some caps, and your work will finally be done. But all this extra work nonsense can easily be avoided if you are feeling truly evil. When Bullet first meets you and Billy as you're taking him home, you can just agree to sell the kid. Bullet will give you 200 caps, or if you pass the speech check, even more, and walk off with Billy, after which the quest will just end. Um, cute kid. Is he for sale? For the right price, yeah. Please, don't sell me to the sky. I'll give you 200 caps right now. Sold. Kid, I found you a new home. That's it. That's the entire mission. You just walk a kid a few steps and sell him into slavery. Mind you, this kid had a loving family waiting for him back home. You should be very ashamed of yourself. Though I'm sure the caps will make the grieving a bit easier. For fourth spot, we venture back into the somehow still civilized underground metropolis of Vault 81. Upon one of your later visits to the vault, you'll overhear from some residents that a young boy named Austin was recently bitten by a strange mole rat and has now come down with a mysterious, inexplicable disease that the doctors fear can't be cured. When you pay the medical bay a visit for yourself, you'll walk in on the doctors arguing, desperately trying to find out how they can save the boy, who they suspect will probably die. Eventually a man named Bobby DeLuca will step up and confess that he may know how to cure Austin. Apparently Bobby had been hiding his chems in a secret, blocked off, and ruined section of the vault that no one else knew about. He admits that Austin must have seen him go inside there, and that's probably how he was bitten by the mole rat. Bobby implies that a cure may be found somewhere in that hidden portion of 81. 
Since you're the protagonist, then it would be no fun if someone else saved the day. The doctors and Bobby will call upon you to go inside that hidden vault and search for the cure. As you make your way through the post-apocalyptic dungeon and read some terminals, you'll begin to piece together the story of what happened. This section of the vault was once used by vault tech scientists, who were testing various experiments on mole rats inside. They were also supposed to be secretly testing on humans, but that's another story. At some point, some of the mole rats infected with the experimental disease got free and took over the entire area. One of those is what bit Austin. Lucky us, as we make our way to the end of the place, we'll meet a modified Miss Handy robot named Curie, you'll probably remember her, who over the past 200 years was able to develop a single cure to the disease. All we have to do is bring a vial of that serum back to Austin to save his life and win the love and support of the entire vault. But here's the thing. If a single one of these mole rats manages to bite you, you'll get infected with the same disease that poor little Austin has. Now, because you're an adult, it won't kill you, but will decrease your max HP by 10 until it's cured. And as mentioned, there's only one cure in the entire game. This leaves you with a perplexing choice. Give the cure to Austin, which will save his life, but force you to live with this debuff effect for the entire remainder of your playthrough, or use it on yourself which will free you from the plague, but without the cure, Austin will soon die. After his passing, a small memorial will even be erected in the vault's classroom to him. It's incredibly sad. Furthermore, if you do somehow manage to clear the portion of the vault without being bitten by a single mole rat somehow, you won't have the disease, but can still refuse to give the boy the cure anyway. As you might be able to predict, the residents will not be very happy with that news at all. Let him die. I'm keeping it. You're going to sell it, aren't you? Bastard. Are you really willing to let Austin die just to earn a few caps? He can die for all I care. What's one more dead child in this world? No wonder we don't let many Commonwealth people into the vault. You are a cold, selfish bastard. Get out of my sight. Your decision cost the boy his life. I hope you can live with that. And finally, last on our list, we have possibly the most well-known evil decision of the video. That is the player's ability to kill Mama Murphy, or at least, cause her death. Throughout Fallout 4, Mama Murphy has a unique power that she calls the Sight, which allows her to either see considerably into the future, or view events and circumstances from an omniscient perspective. The problem is, these visions can only be triggered with the help of chems. She'll offer to use her powers to give the sole survivor insight on your current objectives in exchange for some of those chems. Most of your kind-hearted followers, especially Preston Garvey, deeply disprove of such an arrangement, as they see what's happening and don't want to see this woman's addiction fueled any further. But if you choose to ignore these warnings and continue to give Murphy chems in exchange for readings, after the main questline has been completed, you'll only be able to offer her chems five more times. After that, the next time you ask for her sight, she'll overdose on Psycho and pass away. Oh no. <laughs> you should have seen this coming. <gasps> Mama Murphy. Oh god, no. Drink. Drink of it, I have. The settlement will briefly gather in mourning, and for the remainder of the game, certain characters, specifically Marcy Long, will remember and lambast the player and blame you for her death. And they're not exactly wrong to do so. I can't believe you and Preston let Mama Murphy die like that. You should have stopped her. And thus, the player's greed can claim yet another victim in the brutal universe that Fallout 4 exposes us to. And with that final somber note, we are going to wrap up. Five of the most evil decisions you can make in Fallout 4. Thanks for stopping by, everyone. Which of what we showed off today did you find to be the cruelest, and what horrendous choices have you made that definitely were evil this video didn't tackle? Leave a comment down below. As always, like ratings are very much appreciated. Again, thanks for watching, and I hope to catch you all in my next video. Peace out, everybody.